Hi everyone, this is Omkar from Edureka and today I'll be speaking about brute force attacks. Let's look at the agenda for today's session. Firstly, I'll be telling you what brute force attack is. Then I'll be explaining how brute force attack works. What is the logic behind brute force attacks? Then I'll be showing you a demo showing how to use brute force attacks to get the right credentials of your victim. And finally, I'll be telling you how to prevent brute force attacks. So let's move on and understand what brute force attack is. By definition, brute force is a hacking technique used to find out the user's credentials by trying various possible credentials. So what happens in brute force attack is you are not exploiting any vulnerability in the web application. You're basically trying all the possible combinations and permutations of passwords and usernames of your victim and trying to see if you can get any of those right. So brute force is a hacking technique where you are guessing the credentials. You're not basically exploiting any vulnerability of the web application. It is a trial and error method because you have a large list of usernames and a large list of passwords. And in some cases, if you know what the username is, then the username is single, but the password is a large list of possible passwords. So you have to try each of these combinations and see whether you get it right or wrong. So it's basically a trial and error method. And for brute force attacks, you need a username list and a password list. So in some cases, you need a list for both the username and the password. In some cases, if you know the username, then you only need the password list. And some of the tools that are used for brute force are Metasploit, John the Ripper, Aircrack NG, Hydra and Medusa. So this is what brute force attack is in brief. Now let's see how brute force attack works. This is the flow diagram of how brute force attack works. First, there's a brute force tool to which you feed usernames and passwords, maybe one username and a list of passwords or a list of usernames and a list of passwords. So this brute force tool will send these usernames and passwords, the combination of these usernames and passwords to the web application or to the application in general, where the username and password is checked. It is authenticated. And depending on the response of the application, the tool decides whether the credentials were right or wrong. So if the login was successful, then the username and password is considered to be right. If the login was a failure, then the username and the password, that combination of the username and password is considered to be wrong. So this is how brute force works. Let's take an example of a web application where you're trying to log in into this website. There are two fields, there's username and password username can be a username or your phone number or your email address and then there's a password so what happens is there's a brute forcing tool in this case i've taken the example to be hydra as a brute forcing tool and then there's a passwords and username list so what happens is you feed this password and username list to the brute forcing tool and this brute forcing tool will send a combination of username and password to the web application and here this username and password is validated and verified if there is a success message or if the login was successful then the username and password is considered to be right the credentials is considered to be right and valid and this credential is stored somewhere in the tool and this happens for all the username and passwords present in the username list and the password list suppose there's a username and password that does not let you log in then in that case, it means that username and password is wrong and that username and password is just let off because it's of no use to us. So this is what happens throughout the username list and the password list. All the combinations of username and password is sent to the application and the response after the authentication is analyzed to see whether the credentials were right or wrong. If the credentials are right, then those credentials are stored somewhere in the tool. And if the credentials are wrong, then that combination of username and password is just let go. So this is how brute force attack works. Now let's see a demo where I'll be showing you how to use brute force attack on a web application. So this is the web page that I've created to show you how brute forcing attack works. This is a dummy web page that I'm running on my local server. Now, as you can see that there are two fields, there's a username field and there's a password field and we are going to try to use a tool to guess the username and password for this web application. Now, because I need to guess, I need a list of usernames and I need a list of passwords. So I've created a custom username and password list and I'll just show you the contents of these lists. So the username.txt file contains one, two, three, four, five usernames 
admin at eureka ch hacking and at eureka.co and there's another list called password.txt which has a few passwords now let me show you which combination of username and password is valid and authenticated so the first username is admin and the password is one two three four five six let me hit the login button and see what happens so it's a success which means the login is success and the other valid username and password is edureka and edureka123 and it's also a success now what if i give any other input the username is edureka i'll just type some random input and try to log in and it's a failure there are only two valid username and password one is admin as a username and 123456 as a password the second username is edureka and edureka123 as the password now these lists that I've displayed it has got both the right username and password So it's got admin and it's also got edureka and the password list has got the right passwords that is edureka123 and 123456 for the user admin Now I'm gonna use a brute force tool called hydra to run a brute force attack on this web application So the command for this hydra tool is hydra Let's see what all options it's got. Okay, so if you type Hydra hyphen H, which says help, you can see a lot of options here. The syntax is given. There are different options that you can see, and also a few examples. Now, to hack this web application, I'll be using this tool called Hydra, and I'll be giving it a username list. The option for this will be hyphen capital L. If you want to give a single username, then you have to use small l or lowercase l. And because I have a list, I'll be using the uppercase l. And the path for that particular list. So the path for this list that I'm going to be using is root username dot text. Now I have to give the option for the password list. So the option will be hyphen uppercase p. If you have a single password, then you have to use smaller case p. And then I'll be giving the path for the password file, which is password.txt. Now I have to give the IP address of the web application. Now, because I'm running this web application on my local host, the IP address will be 127.0.0.1. And the next option I'll be giving is the way the data is being passed. So there are mainly two ways there is post method and there is get method. If you don't know what these methods are go back to the SQL injection video that I've made in the playlist where I've explained what the get and the post method is So when you enter the username and password and you hit the login button You don't see anything on the URL which is a clear indication that this web application uses a post method So I'll be mentioning that in the command and the option for that is HTTP form post and next I'll be using the URL for this. So there's the IP address or the domain of the web application, and then there are directories. So I'll just be typing forward slash brute force because that's where the web application is. And then after I enter the username and password, this takes me to a new page called login.php. So this means that my credentials are being checked by this particular file called login.php. And that is actually the web page where I have to run my brute force attack on. So I'll be mentioning that. I'll be mentioning login.php. Next, I have to tell the tool where to enter the username and where to enter the password. For this, I'll just right click on the text box and I'll hit inspect element. So when I do this, I will find the name of that particular text box. In this case, the name for that particular text box is uname. So I'll be using that in my command. So it'll be uname equal to and in between caps will be my user. So this tells the tool to replace the elements in the list in the password list and the username list at this particular position. So this is the username and the next parameter will be password and the name for the password field here is pass. So I'll be using that in my command. So pass equal to and I'll be using caps and pass and after this I'll have to mention one more thing to tell the tool when the login is successful and when the login is a failure so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type some random password 
and this is the message I get when the login is not right. That means when the credentials are wrong. So this is the message and I'll be telling the tool that this is a message that I get when the credentials are wrong. So ignore the username and password combinations that return a failure message that indirectly means whichever credentials are being used and the message failure is not displayed that particular username and password is the right credential. Now let's run this command and see if this tool can find out the right credentials. Earlier I've shown you what the right credentials are. The username is admin and the password is 123456. The other username is edureka and the password is edureka123. So let me just hit the enter button and run this tool. So now we can see that this tool has run a brute force attack on the web application and it has found out the right username and the right password. So these are the usernames like I showed you earlier which are the right credentials and all the other combinations of username and password are wrong and that's not displayed. So this is how you can use a brute force attack on a web application. Now one more thing I'm going to mention here is how to create a username and password list. In my case because I knew what the username and password was I created a custom list. I typed it by hand and created a username and password list. But in most of the cases you don't know what the password is. Maybe you found out the username somehow but you don't know what the password is but you can make an educated guess on what the username or what the password might be. In this case you can use a tool called crunch which is a list generator to generate the list of passwords automatically. So I'll be showing you how you can do that. So this is the tool it's called crunch and let's see the syntax of it. So this is a syntax so crunch minimum maximum and options where minimum and maximum are numbers. So basically you type crunch then you give the minimum number of characters the password should have I'll enter three then you mention the maximum number of characters that password should have I'll try five and the possible characters that password can have so I'll try a b c d e and I'll hit the enter button. Now we can see that this tool is generating all these passwords like you can see it's generated all the possible passwords using that combination of characters for that particular length. So it's generated 3875 lines. So this is a very helpful tool if you're making an educated guess. But the problem with brute force attack is suppose the password is complex or it's lengthy then it will take a lot of time to generate the password list. For example suppose you have no idea what the password could be and you type a few alphabets here and all the numbers and the length because most of the passwords require a minimum length of six characters suppose the maximum is eight. Now you see the password generator has to generate this number of passwords and it takes a lot of time even if you are using a fast computer it will take a lot of time sometimes hours sometimes days sometimes weeks and depending on the length and the complexity maybe years sometimes. So this method of generating a password is basically the last thing you should be doing because it takes a lot of time like you can see it's still on the letter B and it's still on six characters. It's generating passwords of only six characters even now. So this is how you can generate a password list. So when you run the command you can also see some information about how much time it might take or how much the size of the file can be. So I'll just run this command again and I'll not let it execute. I'll just show you the information that it's displayed. So, so basically when I'm trying to generate a password of minimum six letters, six characters and a maximum of eight characters with these combinations of characters, it has to generate 61 GB of data which is a lot and that's why it takes so much time. So this is how we can use brute force attack to guess the credentials of a victim. Now let's see how you can prevent brute force attacks. So while you're creating your password it's very important for you to create a strong password and also when you are building a web application you have to take measures so that you can prevent brute force attacks on your web application. So here's a list of some of the most common prevention methods. The first thing is to increase a password length. Now like I showed you while using the crunch password generator it takes a lot of time when the length of the password is more. So basically if you create a password with a greater length it will take more time making it more difficult for the hacker to hack your password. The next prevention method is to use password complexity. 
Suppose you use only numbers as your password, it's easy to guess because the password generator can generate your password pretty quick. And suppose you're using a combination of letters and numbers, the complexity increases. Suppose you're using letters, numbers and special characters, then the password complexity increases even more. So it's better that you increase your password length and also use letters, numbers and characters. The next way to prevent brute force attack as a web developer would be limiting login attempt. So what you can do is you have to limit the login attempt. Suppose you have a web application and I am trying to log into that and I give a lot of wrong attempts because basically brute force is trying and guessing. So before the hacker gets the right password, there can be a lot of times where he's trying with invalid or wrong username and password. So what you have to do is limit the login attempts. Maybe do something like let the user attempt for login three times and if the first three times if the attempt is wrong then freeze that account or freeze that login for that particular user for some time maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes this will increase the time the hacker takes to hack your password making it difficult for him the next thing you can do is implement otps a lot of web application these days especially in the finance sector use otps because maybe your password and username is easy to guess but when you use OTPs there's some other parameter that is used to verify your account. So this will make it almost impossible for a brute force attack to successfully work because it's not just the username and password that's required to log in. It's also another parameter the OTP. The next thing you can do is using CAPTCHAs. This is a very powerful way and a lot of web applications use this. Because brute forcing tools mainly guess the username and password when you use different captchas it makes it almost impossible for a brute force attack to bypass the login or to guess the right password and username. And then you can use two factor authentication. Two factor authentication is basically two steps where the user has to authenticate his account. So one can be the username and password. The next can be a secret question and you have to give an answer to that. So these are few methods that you can use to prevent brute force attacks. That's it for this session. If you like this video like and share and stay tuned for more videos on ethical hacking where I'll be telling you different methods of hacking. Until next time then thank you and bye bye. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!